Hi there, my name is Ms. Bill and I'm a fifth grade teacher at Arbor Heights Elementary in West Seattle. I'm so happy to be here with you teaching these lessons this week. I love to read. I also love to teach math and I love any time I can have with my three year old granddaughter. Let's get started with today's lesson. For today's lesson, all you need is an IDR book and a Turn and Talk partner. A Turn and Talk partner can be someone that you're watching this video with. It could be a stuffed animal. It could be a pet. Or it could just be reflecting in your own mind. That's what I'm going to do today. In today's lesson, we're going to hear and discuss a science fiction story. We're going to be giving reasons for our opinions and we'll finish up with reading independently for 30 minutes. In yesterday's lesson, we heard a review about a story called Mrs. Buell that had been read the previous week. Let's remember that a review gives a summary of a text and the reviewer's opinion about it. Let's think about why it's important to form opinions and make judgments as we read. Please turn and talk and reflect on your own. Go ahead and pause the screen. In thinking about why it's important to form opinions and make judgments on what we read, we really need to see if we actually even believe what the text is saying, because we know there's things out there that aren't necessarily true. It's also really important to see if you agree with the text. We all have our own opinions and you may have a very different opinion, or you may agree with what part of what the author is saying and not part of another. We also want to find out what the author's opinions are, because whatever the author's opinions are is going to influence what they say in their writing. And lastly, we might want to decide if this is an interesting topic to us and if we want to read more texts like this or find out more information about this topic. Today for our read aloud, I'm going to read you a story named Zoo. It's a science fiction story by Edward D. Hotch. But before we read, I want to ask you a few questions. What do you think you know about science fiction? What science fiction stories have you heard or read in the past? And perhaps what science fiction movies have you seen? Please press pause while you turn and talk or reflect on your own. You might have said that science fiction stories take place in the future, or you might have said that often they have aliens in them. I know one science fiction movie that a lot of you have probably seen is Star Wars. For our read aloud today, you can follow along in your student response book on pages 88, 86 through 88. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can just sit back I might even suggest closing your eyes to help you visualize what's happening in the story and to tune out whatever's going on around you. And just try as I'm reading to make a mental image in your mind of what's going on in the story. I'll be stopping several times as I read to stop and ask you some co comprehension questions. All right, let's get started. Zoo by Edward D. Hotch. The children were always good during the month of August especially when it began to get near the 23rd. It was on this day that Professor Hugo's Interplanetary Zoo settled down for its annual six hour visit to the Chicago area. Before daybreak, the crowds would form, long lines of children and adults, both each clutching his or her dollar and waiting with wonderment to see what race of strange creatures the professor had brought this year. In the past, they had sometimes been treated to three-legged creatures from Venus, or tall, thin men from Mars, or even snake-like horrors from somewhere more distant. This year, as the great round ship settled slowly to Earth in the huge Tri-City parking area just outside of Chicago, 
They watched with awe as the sides slowly slid up to reveal the familiar barred cages. What happens in this part of the story that you just heard? What do you might think might happen next? Go ahead and turn and talk or reflect in your own head. Let's continue. This year, as the great round ship settled slowly to Earth in the huge Tri-City parking area just outside of Chicago, they watched with awe as the sides slowly slid up to reveal the familiar barred cages. In them were some wild breed of nightmare, small horse-like animals that moved with quick jerky motions and constantly chattered in a high-pitched tongue. High-pitched tongue is like a squeaky voice. The citizens of Earth clustered around as Professor Hugo's crew quickly collected the waiting dollars, and soon the good professor himself made an appearance, wearing his many-colored rainbow cape and top hat. Peoples of Earth, he called into his microphone. The crowd's noise died down as he continued. Peoples of Earth, this year you will see a real treat for your single dollar, the little known horse spider people of Khan, brought to you across a million miles of space at great expense. Gather around, study them, listen to them, tell your friends about them, but hurry. My ship can only remain here for six hours. And the crowd slowly filed by, at once horrified and fascinated by these strange creatures that looked like horses but ran up the walls of their cages like spiders. This is certainly worth a dollar, one man remarked, hurrying away. I'm going home to get the wife. What happens in this part of the story you just listened to? What do you think will happen next? Go ahead and turn and talk or reflect in your own head. Let's continue. This is certainly worth a dollar, one man remarked, hurrying away. I'm going home to get the wife. All day long it went like that until 10,000 people had filed by the barred cages set into the side of the spaceship. Then, as the six-hour limit ran out, Professor Hugo once more took microphone in hand. We must go now, but we will return next year on this date. And if you enjoyed our zoo this year, phone your friends in other cities about it. We will land in New York tomorrow, and next week on to London Paris, Rome, Hong Kong, and Tokyo, then on to other worlds. He waved farewell to them, and as the ship rose from the ground, the Earth people agreed that this had been the very best zoo yet. Some two months and three planets later, the silver ship of Professor Hugo settled at last onto the familiar jagged rocks of Khan and the queer horse spider creatures filed quickly out of their cages. Professor Hugo was there to say a few parting words, and then they scurried away in a hundred different directions, seeking their homes among the rocks. What happens in this part of the story that you just heard? Go ahead and turn and talk or reflect on your own. Here we go. Professor Hugo was there to say a few parting words and then they scurried away in a hundred different directions, seeking their homes among the rocks. In one, the she creature was happy to see the return of her mate and offspring. She babbled a greeting in the strange tongue and hurried to embrace them, to hold them. 
It was a long time you were gone. Was it good? And the he creature, the male creature nodded. The little one enjoyed it especially. We visited eight worlds and saw many things. The little one ran up the wall of the cave. On the place called Earth, it was the best. The creatures there wear garments over their skins and they walk on two legs. But isn't it danger, dangerous, asked the she creature. No, her mate said, there are bars to protect us from them. We remain right in the ship. Next time, you must come with us. It is well worth the 19 comics it costs. And the little one nodded. It was the very best zoo ever. I hope you enjoyed this story. Let's discuss it now for a little bit. Our discussion prompt that we're going to be using today is the reason I think this is. My first question for you is what is this story about? Please turn and talk or reflect on your own. Go ahead and pause the screen. You might have said that this story is about an interplanetary zoo that lands in Chicago. Many people, both children and adults, are lined up and for one dollar they get to see the amazing creatures. This year, the creatures are the horse spider people of Khan. Next question. What is interesting or unexpected about this story? Please turn and talk to your partner or reflect on your own. Go ahead and pause. I know for me, one thing that I didn't expect was for the horse spider people to be intelligent like humans. The reason I think this is that the creatures are more animal-like than human. One thing I didn't expect or excuse me, one thing that I found interesting was that the creatures think the cages are to protect them, while the humans are thinking just the opposite, that the bars of the cages protect them from the creatures. Do you think you would recommend this story to someone else? If so, what are some reasons Either turn and talk or reflect on your own. Go ahead and pause the screen. I think I would recommend this story to someone that I knew liked science fiction stories or liked stories with made up creatures or liked to hear stories about space. Next, are you yourself interested in reading more science fiction stories? Why or why not? Turn and talk or reflect on your own. Go ahead and pause. I, for one, am more interested in reading more science fiction stories. One that I have read that I think you might enjoy too is A Wrinkle in Time. There was a movie written about it recently, and it's an absolutely amazing book. Tomorrow, we're going to revisit um, your opinions about the story and write a review about it together. Thanks so much for joining me to today's lesson. Now it's time for independent daily reading. Yesterday, I began a story called The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gemeinhart. Remember today as you're reading to help you with your comprehension by asking yourself the following questions as you read. What is happening in my book? Stop and ask yourself, do I understand what I'm reading? Do I know what's going on? Am I able to figure out what most of the words mean? And then of course, most important of all, is this book interesting to me? Is it fun and am I enjoying myself? Happy reading everyone, and I hope you'll join me back tomorrow for the next lesson.
Have a great day.